To jest Radio Szczecin. Radio Szczecin. All right, so it's uh, Faro Monch on uh, Radio hey. Szczecin. And Kion Harold on hey, Radio Szczecin. Hey, how are you? Great, how are you? Good, everything's good. Great to be back here. You are for the first time here in Szczecin? No, I was no? here, I was in Poland in Warsaw uh, about five or six years ago with uh, Mo Staff. We did a like a festival concert. Yeah. It was really nice. But in Szczecin, first time? Yes. Yes. Okay. And any first impressions? Um, well, we came in at night, so it was dark. And <laughs> you didn't see much. <laughs> we didn't see too much. Right. So. All right. You were playing together already in Poland, in Warsaw. You were also, I read that you are working on some music in Poland. Is it like something that you are working on together or what is it? Yeah, we're working on some music always collaborating on new projects so mm -hmm. um it just so happens that we we're recording in in poland very very nice studio um so just building continually just building the archives well Faro, i've seen that your fans were really waiting for you in poland that they <laughs> actually came to the location that you shared uh, yeah. via social media right yeah i was uh i was uh at a off a hotel kind of out of the way a little bit so I was using my uh, Google Maps to figure out exactly my longitude, latitude, <laughs> <laughs> and I posted, you know, copied and I posted on Instagram, you know, the yeah. city that I was in in the exact location, and, uh, you know, some fans came through and they bought their, their CDs to, for me to sign. I just thought that was really cool, so, you know. Yeah, that's very cool. Dedication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So did they come a long road or just... They said they were like an hour away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So not that far, but still very cool. Yeah. Well, it seems that it's really a perfect fit that you are working together. Yuki and you are always collaborating with many different people from many different genres. And you mentioned in many interviews that jazz musicians were big inspiration uh, for you. So this looks like a really perfect union, right? Absolutely. I mean, from the first time we started working on the Miles Ahead, Miles Davis movie, um, we worked on a song called Gone, um, 2015. And from since then, you know, we've just been been building and working on music and doing shows. It's been a, been a great run and a, and a natural collaboration. So it's really, really cool. And how jazz musicians influenced you in particular? I just uh, think growing up, it was always in the house. Uh, My pops was a big Miles and Sonny Stitt <laughs> fan. He used to mention that was his guy. So it, it got you exploring, especially when I became a professional and you're digging through records uh, for samples. Now you're starting to see who plays with who, and now you're looking for their archives. And so you get an education from uh, looking at these artists who played bass, who played piano, and you're learning uh, who were in the, the groups and the trios together and what have you. And so aside from that, just uh, the expression to be able to evoke an emotion or a mood uh, through music uh, without words, I think pushes you as a writer to be a little more vivid, you know, just listening to train and different artists and just imagining what that beauty was or that pain was you know when you when you go to write um you try to be just as uh vivid and expressive as well as uh you know they were really pushing especially uh trumpeters and saxophones and wind musicians and brass musicians they really pushed the envelope on breathing as well and so that was a big influence having asthma it really pushed me to work on uh, breathing techniques i was asking about that because i was thinking if mixing jazz with hip-hop uh, for both of you does it give you like a bigger outreach of your music uh, recently i was speaking to hip-hop artist rashan Ahmad, who was playing also in Szczecin with mm. our philharmonic orchestra and he mentioned that you know it's for him like a chance to share his music with some of the people that normally wouldn't maybe listen to hip-hop music or don't even know a lot of hip-hop music mm -hmm. yeah exactly. it's, it's it's a you know it's a trade-off because sometimes people think jazz is maybe too complicated or they think it's too yeah. too um 
I don't want to say stuck up, but it's, it's maybe it's grown up music. So they don't really want to connect to it. So it's easier for them to, to connect when the, the biggest selling genre in the world is, you know, hooked up to it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, honestly, the music is coming from the same place. Um, it's coming from the soul. So it's better. You know, I think it's just a good mix to have for me as an instrumentalist to have the vocal aspect of what maybe what I'm playing or another way to interpret um, the same song, the same set of chords, the same set of um, um, structure and music to have somebody solo over it. And, you know improvisation and to have somebody spit and, and say bars over it you know it just gives the full um the full interpretation of, of what the feeling should be yeah i also uh, feel like i mentioned the uh, orchestra and when i was recently listening into your music i heard many you know elements of different genres like gospel music but also a lot of strings like in broken again a mm. fabulous song and really strings strengthen its character you started mostly like with samples but mm -hmm. then you started using live instruments and what is your approach right now after all those concerts i mean uh the, the end result is to try to match the vision in your head so if that means being a minimalist that's what it is if it means bringing in strings to write the pieces to bring across that particular feeling at the, that particular point, then that's what it is. And, um, you know, I just grew as a producer in terms of uh, even just uh, making beats to, uh, you know, even overseeing and arranging and executive producing a lot of the work on the past few albums just to see the vision through. So you mentioned Broken Again, uh, the producers... Uh, one of the guys is a violinist, and he brought some extra people in, and um, I felt like strings would, would help bring out the despair and the sadness of that topic. You mentioned growing as a producer. You both had a lot of like uh, chances to learn from great people in music, and I wanted to hear your opinion about the new people in the music business. Because it seems that right now it is easy to publish a song to, you know, reach other people through mm. internet. Mm. But then when I see some of the new young artists, not all of them, but for instance, on talent shows, when people don't even know Phil Collins of Stevie Wonder and don't, they don't know like some classic songs from the 90s, like, I don't know, Waterfalls by TLC. Mm -hmm. Waterfalls is important. <laughs> well, that's just one example that <laughs> I on, heard. But the, the other guy was like... Phil Collins, who's that? Like Stevie mm -hmm. Wonder? Oh my God! What's your opinion on that? Like on the new musicians that you well, encountered? Well, it's a exposure thing. I mean, in the day that we live, since there is the internet, there's access to everything. There's also um, plenty of time to not even check out the old stuff. You can just only listen to the new stuff since there's so much of it. Yeah. Um, you know. Ultimately, I hope, you know, younger aspiring artists would take the time to learn their lineage, um, to learn, you know, about different styles, learn about the great artists in their own field. You know, I was fortunate enough coming up to have an appreciation for Miles, to have appreciation for Clifford Brown and Freddie Hubbard and, and all the trumpet players to get to where I am now as a trumpet player. Um, there are, you know, I don't want to hate, but there are a lot of people who all of a sudden they're the biggest star. Um, because they feel that they learned a couple lines, you know, instead mm -hmm. of taking it deep and, and, you know, being thorough with their craft. And that's that's a whole nother level of artistry that you just, you know, take the time and be diligent in the history. You'll be able to be more poignant and thoughtful when you when you do your art. I, I think so. You once had this uh, concept, I think, on your Twitter, like a battle between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. If you could together create this kind of you know hip-hop battle of the artists that are recording right now which MCs would be the winners I like uh, Kendrick a lot and I like Drake too um, I'm listening to new Elzai and uh, Royce the five nine and black milk and mm -hmm. you know it's current stuff that's dropping it's really I good mean, a lot of good really good music out right now so it it fluctuates but um I try and stay listening to the upper echelon MCs <laughs> if I can. Mm -hmm. 
we are mentioning the guys, but you had a post on Instagram about women recently that you thought about uh, women and their struggle in, mm -hmm. in the industry and the work that they had to do. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I don't uh -huh. know what's your opinion, but when I'm listening to your music, there are many like female solos and they sound really empowering, really strong. Mm -hmm. So what do you both think about uh, women in this industry, in mm. the struggle or position? I mean, that what comes to mind immediately is uh, uh, what is going on in Hollywood with uh, women coming out about yeah. being harassed and such. And... You can only imagine uh, the struggle that that is in the music industry as well, trying to push your career forward as a female MC, musician, whatever the case may be. So um, it's always good when I'm empowered to put women in place on the songs or on stage with me. Um, I had a young lady, Mila Machinko, and different amazing vocalists throughout the years, as well as Uh, be supportive and even uh, working throughout the years with Jean Grey you know she was very adamant about not even being called a female MC you know she's just like I'm better than most of the guys so <laughs> I'm just an MC and um, you know it's it's uh, our thinking is changing and I think uh, Jean and Rhapsody and all these women stepping up to the forefront is changing the narrative especially and hip-hop and that's a good thing you know yeah it's a, a similar thing just in jazz um for female empowerment female opportunity there's a, a big market of of people who come to see jazz but you can come out and maybe for the next 10 shows you might not see a woman on stage so that is an issue um one that has to be dealt with um in a major way and that's you know figuring out how to help build up young ladies learning how to play instruments more and giving them more opportunity to shine and to grow. So that is a, a big process that I have to, you know, take on almost every day. Um, my partner is a very, very empowered, strong woman who puts it in my face on a daily basis that I need to pay attention to my opportunities and the lack of opportunities that other people have women particularly so i have to be one of the guys who actually empower them and give them an opportunity to shine so it's a process you know i have to learn a lot of things that unlearn a lot of things that i felt which is a very very interesting thing in this political time in this time in in arts in this time in media and everything so it's a process You both collaborate a lot with uh, women and uh, men, and I was wondering for you, what is like the key to a perfect collaboration? Is it that you do a lot of work with your friends, the people that you know, or do you sometimes experiment and not choose like the obvious choices? Yeah, you don't want to be contrived with your choices or with your vision. So, you know, whatever works, if it's the same people and, and that thing is uh, creating something organic, each time then you stick with with what's right and I think you also go outside of your circle to you know cast if I say like making a film the right people for that role because again it's about trying to make the perfect film mm -hmm. make the perfect dish uh, you know as a chef cooking it up season it the proper way so I mean you, that means going out of the genre Uh, female it doesn't matter just you just want it to be right that's how I see so yeah you you constantly looking for what makes the stew mm -hmm. perfect I listened to your recent collaborations like uh, I keep on with uh, apathy or uh, with uh, Chris uh, Dave and the drumheads uh, great stuff and when do you have a plan for the future it's always it's a everyday process a um, a, 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 well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, my my new project is is more of a rock vibe. Um, I'm working with two really dope musicians. Who I don't, you know, we haven't been saying who the musicians are because we just want to present it visually to the people in a new way. Um, I've like kind of pulled back the Pharaoh identity and took a mm -hmm. a new name. I'd like to try to really become part of a band and a team player. And um, 
that that project is really dope as well as um you know i think for verses you get called every day like apathy called me up and master ace just called me up about an incredible idea and we've never worked together and i look at him as a legend and um you know you're constantly with 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 you know collabing so mm. that's why it's a difficult question yeah. Yeah. all right exactly um so in, in that couple things coming up obviously work with chris dave stuff with james poison stuff with a bunch of different people um that i'm excited about um stuff that's coming out and stuff that I'm, i plan on doing for my next record All right, we look forward to that. And it's funny that you mentioned that it's like creating a movie. I wanted to ask you both because obviously where you are musically, it changes, it shifts with many different uh, inspirations. But if you were to compare like where you are musically right now to a movie or to some movies, what kind of movies would it be? <laughs> I mean, for me, it feels like really like some, some Morgan Freeman vibe because I've been doing it for a long time. And uh, just career-wise, I feel like it's getting better um, as I get older. And so it's a beautiful thing, you know, where 20 years ago, I would worry about this time now. It just feels like uh, the, the wisdom that I've gained musically and the traveling and seeing the world, I'm definitely grateful. And so I've taking that all in and I try to apply all of that information and the heartbreak and the love and the happy back into the music so it's good to be in my skin from a music point right now <laughs> mm -hmm. that's cool and you? Uh, from a movie standpoint I have to say that I'm pushing forward like um, I'm in the portion of my career where I've done you know so much stuff with other people um that i'm finally having the opportunity to have my own artistic approach happen um to have my sound to have my vision to have my um artistic interpretations be recognized so it's, it's almost like a new thing um so for me it's it's um the the whole we shall overcome narrative being lived in real time Um, that I finally have the opportunity to, to, to be recognized. I'm trying to think of a movie that would actually codify that particularly, but, you know, I'm, I'm at that place. Yeah. All right. So I hope that you will have a great concert today in Szczecin. Thank you. Can you tell something, you know, about this concert to our listeners? Like, what's, what's going to happen tonight? Uh, it's going to be incredible vibes. Um, I have an amazing... Um, band with me also here obviously is the great Pharaoh Munch we're gonna do some music that we've written and some stuff of his um, we're gonna do some original music from, from my album The Magician and you know we're just gonna have a good time mixing genres and just playing soul music yeah <laughs> <laughs> ultimately Yeah, that sounds cool. And this is our tradition on this show that we also ask our musical guest to add something to our playlist. What would you like to recommend from the other artists? Like anyone that you like or would like our listeners to listen to? Um, let's see, what am I listening to right now? Um, I'm still listening to a lot of uh, Alabama Shakes, Song, Sounds and Color. I'm listening to... A new Jericho Jackson, which is a uh, crisis in Elzai, this new project. I'm listening to the August Green is cracking right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, I've been listening to a lot of um, alternative stuff. Bon Iver. So I've been vibing that for like the last week, like hard. And um, the August Green stuff, big supporters. All right, so that's what we are going to play. <laughs> Thank you again for being at Radio Stretching. Thank you. So that was Faro Munch and Kian Harold. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Radio Stretching.